At 2.24 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on March 27, 1977, Pan American Flight 1736, a Boeing 747, took off from John F. Kennedy Airport in New York City, bound for Las Palmas in the Canary Islands. One hour and 18 minutes later, KLM Flight 4805, another Boeing 747, took off from Schiphol Airport in Amsterdam, also headed to Las Palmas. While the two aircraft were en route to Las Palmas, a terrorist bomb exploded in the passenger terminal at the airport. As a result, all aircraft destined for Las Palmas were diverted to Los Rodeos Airport on the island of Tenerife. Due to congestion at Los Rodeos, both 747 aircraft were told to park in the holding area for runway 12, with the KLM aircraft closest to the runway. Several hours later, after the Las Palmas airport had been reopened, the Pan American crew prepared to proceed to Las Palmas. However, when they attempted to taxi to the runway, their path was blocked by the KLM airplane. At 4.58 p.m., the KLM airplane asked for and received permission to enter the runway and begin taxiing to the holding position for runway 30. The initial clearance to the KLM airplane was to exit the runway at the third taxiway. This was later amended for the airplane to backtrack, that is to taxi down the length of the runway and execute a 180 degree turn. At 5.02, the Pan Am airplane was contacted by the tower and told to travel down the runway and then exit it using the third transverse taxiway, taxiway C3. This would clear the way for the KLM airplane to take off. The first two taxiways, C-1 and C-2, were unusable due to the numerous aircraft diverted from Las Palmas that had been parked on the taxiway parallel to the runway. As the Pan Am aircraft began its taxi on the runway, there was some confusion as to which taxiway they were to use to exit the runway. The tower confirmed that they were to use the third taxiway, C-3. At 5.03, the KLM airplane told the tower that they had just passed taxiway C-4. The tower replied that the KLM airplane should execute the 180-degree turn and report when ready for ATC clearance. There was intermittent fog during the taxi of the two airplanes. Runway visibility was measured from a device 70 meters south of the approach end of runway 30. Runway visibility was measured at 2 to 3,000 meters at 450, 300 meters at 502, and 1,000 meters at 510. The variable visibility was due to fog that was being carried along the length of the runway. The visibility deteriorated to the point that aircraft taxiing on the main runway, as well as some located in the parking area, were not visible from the tower. At 5.04 and 26 seconds, the Pan Am captain stated that they had passed the C-1 taxiway. At 5.05, the tower informed the KLM and Pan Am airplanes that the runway centerline lighting was out of service. In response to the tower communication, the Pan Am captain informed the crew that with the centerline lights out, they would need 800 meters of visibility in order to take off. The captain also noted that they were passing taxiway C-2. At 5.05 and 53 seconds, the tower provided the KLM airplane with its ATC clearance. At 5.06 and 9 seconds, the KLM airplane read back the clearance and announced that we're now at takeoff. At 5.06 and 11 seconds, the brakes on the KLM 747 were released, followed three seconds later by throttle movement in order to set takeoff power. At this time, the KLM airplane was rolling down the runway. At 5.06 and 18 seconds, the tower controller replies, OK, followed two seconds later with, Stand by for takeoff, I will call you. Concurrent with the controller's request to stand by for takeoff, the Pan Am airplane announced on the radio that they were still taxiing down the runway. The simultaneous transmissions caused a shrill noise in the KLM cockpit making the transmissions difficult to hear. At 5.06 and 25 seconds, the controller asked the Pan Am airplane to report when they were clear of the runway. Pan Am responded that they would report when clear. This transmission was heard in the KLM cockpit, prompting the KLM flight engineer to ask the KLM captain, is he not clear then? 
the captain didn't hear the question and responded with, what do you say? And the flight engineer again asked, is he not clear that Pan American? The KLM captain responded to the second question with an emphatic, oh yes. At approximately 5.06 and 38 seconds, the Pan Am flight crew saw the KLM airplane coming at them out of the fog. The Pan Am crew attempted to avoid the collision by accelerating and turning left towards the grass. Nine seconds later, the two airplanes collided on the runway just short of the C-4 taxiway. Of the 248 passengers and crew aboard the KLM flight, there were no survivors. 335 of the 396 aboard the Pan Am flight were killed, making this the deadliest accident in the history of aviation.